Hey HCDA and welcome back to Satisfactory. This is my bite-sized run which is aimed at those of you who want to progress through this game without every build taking weeks to complete but still have an awesome looking factory. Last time around we built this little tower over here that is producing iron plates and this time around we are going to take our screw and iron rod production literally to the next level because I want to build a very similar structure to this but actually see if we can use blueprints to make that in such a way that it's actually a bite-sized build. So um, in terms of production it's going to be anything but bite-sized because we are going to be producing 800 screws per minute as well as about 40 iron rods a minute left over. Now in order to do that we only need one thing and that is this um, pure iron node over here that is going to be enough to actually supply all the, the raw materials that we need in order to build that and we are going to build that tower over here we have a little platform we're good to go so oh, let's see if that works oh boy uh, this is a good demonstration of why you should save before you place anything down because i just managed to get this one tile off and now i can actually go and reload my game in order to place this or remove everything by hand so that's that's a little bit annoying anyway um a couple of things to note when we're using blueprints just to make sure you're aware of that i added in compared to last time these pillars on the bottom floor just to make it look a little bit more clean and i also added in the power cables uh, attached to the cables and actually, those are actually on the back i think so let me see uh, where is it where is it where is it over here there you can see so we can easily connect the power to the for the different levels without actually having to go on the layer itself um other than that, it's good to note that you can now easily snap everything to each other. So this should be very straightforward to build. Now, I actually intentionally placed the power nodes on the pillar on the same side in every section of the build. So it's just a matter of aligning those to where it should go. And there's one on each side. So that's, that's very convenient. And then all we need to do is flip it around 180 degrees as we build up. And we should be able to do that pretty quickly, as you can see. So this is very nice and easy to build. Now, remember, it's very useful to also use the um, to-do list, as you can see on the right. Just to make sure that while we're building something like this, we have all the materials we need. Because you don't want to have to run up and down several times while building a larger construction like this. And I do think that the blueprints really shine when you're building a tower type of building like this because it's very straightforward you can actually use the blueprints very easily to make the entire build there's only going to be one downside and that is actually uh, getting the horizontal movement uh, sorry the vertical movement in place to actually build this because we don't have our jetpack just yet so this is going to be a bit of a challenge now speaking of verticality it's actually not trivial to have your blueprint snap on top of the tower if you're standing on the ground so i'm currently standing on the most precarious type of ladder that you could have in order to make sure we can snap but uh, honestly the tower is turning out really nice uh, it's it's quite a bit bare so we're definitely going to have to improve a little bit on that and well generally speaking you could leave it like it is i mean it doesn't look bad it, it doesn't look necessarily very good either but uh, it's very straightforward to build like this and I don't necessarily think we're going to kind of replicate this all over the place and just have to have towers everywhere but if that's something you want to do you could um really really happy with how this is turning out even with a larger tower than what we've previously done so um we're going to have to make sure it looks a bit better than this though now to give you a better idea of the size of this tower, this is the tower we've built before for the iron plates and now to be honest it looks tiny compared to what we have over here uh, because this is going to be producing the 800 screws and 40 iron rods on top of that. So uh, what I want to do is kind of build this tower in the same style as this one but we're also going to have to deal with some different challenges because as you can see we have these, this whole... Um, lift structure outside because we have two different items coming out of this and we also have one item going up and two items going down we'll have to figure out how to deal with that now on top of that i want to make sure we have a nice looking truck station set up here as well and i think considering we have kind of this natural highway in here but we also have this this path onto the side that i can show you like this uh we have to I think take that into account so that we can get our trucks driving in whichever direction we want. I'm not entirely sure yet where the, the hub is going to be. I think it's going to be in this direction, honestly, which would be very nice in order to make use of this little this, this, this side entrance over here. Um, but to be honest, it might just as well be set up in such a way that we can always change our minds later. 
Now, unlike with a normal factory construction where I actually recommend you set everything up before you start connecting belts, or at least putting items on those belts, I do recommend that you actually put, um, kind of build up your factory in a tower facility from the ground floor up. So I already have the ore coming in, as you can see, I have the first factories uh, smelters working, they are transporting the, uh, the ingots above. And we have the output from the iron first iron rod production up and running. And by doing so, you can just make sure that you're connecting everything up correctly. Um, the direction of those belts might sometimes be a little bit confusing depending on how you've set up your, your layer blueprint. Um, so that's just to make sure that everything is, is connected in the way it should be. Uh, and it's also very satisfying to actually see your factory slowly come to life as you're building it, which is always very useful when you're doing a bite-sized play like I am doing in this run. Um, yeah, uh, we have a couple of floors to go, so let's keep on it. Oh, by the way, and, and here's where you can actually see the power uh, connections really up and running. So the power actually goes through the floors, but it looks very natural in this way. And it really makes it easy to connect everything up. Because I just built a giant ladder and went from top to bottom, connecting these nodes up. And then that means automatically every el everything else in the entire tower is powered up. So very easy, very convenient. And it saves so much time not having to set up each individual power pole. So I am definitely falling over and over in love again with blueprints. Now, when it comes to the actual logistics of all of this, this is going to be slightly more complicated, like I said, than the previous tower. So we have the ingots going uh, up from the bottom smelting level up to the first floor. We're going to have four floors of iron rod production. So this belt is actually um, going all the way around on the back here as well and up. And then on the second level, it's going to go up all the way through the third level and so on. So we'll actually have four levels of iron rod production with these iron ingots uh, slinging back and forth. Uh, all the way to the top in two sides now we also are going to need some of that iron rod production to actually go down and we're going to need most of it to actually go up so for that reason we have a smart splitter on the first level of iron rod production so that a little bit of overflow that we're aiming for can actually go down now it, you do need to think a little bit about how much overflow you're aiming for i'm only aiming myself at an overflow of 40 iron rods per minute so that's going to be more than sufficient to come from the first floor um, but if you want to have more than that in terms of overflow you'll need to make sure that um, there's a, sp a splitter somewhere along the way that you can actually use to bring everything back down but most of our iron rod production will be going up and as you can see we have a pretty nice looking back and forth type of construction here so this is a merger that's merging the belt that comes out of the the floor that that we have the constructors on and is also merging that with the with the lift that comes down from the floor below and then that's combined into a single lift and then we do that on and on until we get to the last floor of iron rod production and once you set up all the logistics and also take care of the aesthetics a little bit by putting in some steel plates it should look something like this and what you're looking at right here down the middle is actually all the um screw production going all the way from the top to the bottom now you can see this this is kind of alternating um in terms of the splitters and mergers there's no clipping here so i think it looks really clean and actually aesthetically i think it's also very pleasing um but the idea is here this this is basically an alternating belt so every second level is attached to the the, the level of well, the two levels before and that way we actually have a total of two belts in, in, in all the way in the end coming down here. Now connecting this up to a single merger is not actually going to work of course. Uh, but it looks it's kind of nice in terms of how it looks for now. What we are going to have to do however is go back um, maybe one or two episodes from now and upgrade all these lifts to a Mark IV belt or Mark IV lift. Because, of course, we are producing a total of 800 per minute, and that's not going to fit in total on the Mark III belts. However, in order to actually progress, those Mark III belts will give us enough production in terms of what we need. So the actual upgrade is only going to be needed if we need more screws after that. So there is a uh, logic to my plan here. Now, what I still want to do is make sure we have this, this bottom floor a little bit more nicely aligned. I already put it down a couple of other things. So we have some um, ramps over here, kind of interconnecting the, the areas that we have, uh, but it's still kind of empty and, 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 and rough looking. Although I do like uh, things like this, like leaving these trees over here 
uh, all the way by themselves. It, I, I kind of like to build around the natural environment, as you know. Um, as long as it doesn't clip through anything or, or gets in the way of where my trucks need to go, for example. So let's see if we can dress this up a tiny bit more. Step one, we're going to need some truck stations. And I think it's really satisfying to see all these screws coming in. I really, really hate screws in this game. So just the fact that we have two full Mark III belts already going into this truck station is amazing. Now, like I said, the merger that I showed before would not actually work or, or do anything. Uh, so I removed that and made sure that the, um, the, the lifts are actually directly connected to the truck station. Uh, I think, uh, to be honest, it looks really nice if you look at the, from the front as well. Because it looks really straightforward, all our production moving. And of course we have a second truck station as well, because we're going to need to get the um, iron rods in here for as well. But those will be coming over here from the back. And we'll be able to draw these from these, that smart splitter over here. I'm actually thinking we should probably just bring it around the back over here anyway. And we are also going to need a little bit more room for our trucks to actually move around. So we might have to extend this platform a little bit more. So our trucks actually have somewhere to turn around. Which would be something like this. Now I actually went back to the awesome shop and got some, uh, some fun stuff around to kind of make this look a little bit more interesting. We have some arrows on the floor now. We know actually where our trucks are going to park. We have some directional arrows just to make sure it's a little easier for us to remember where our trucks should be driving. And we also um, have some railings and stuff like that to kind of dress everything up a bit more. Um, it's important to make sure that these trucks will not be colliding with each other. So the idea is that we have the incoming trucks down the middle. Then they either move to the left or right depending where they need to go. And then from that point on they can actually just keep moving straight through. In terms of these two truck stations we do need to make sure that um, we're a little bit aware of where our trucks are going to stop. But as long as the trucks are and not waiting in front of these truck stations too long. Um, this this back truck station should not be colliding with this one. And even if it is, it, they will at least be moving in the same direction. So as soon as the forward truck starts moving again, the truck behind it will also start moving once again. Now I have to say, I think this looks amazing, these builds like this coming out from over the trees. Um, of course, aesthetics is completely subjective, but I really like how this is turning out. And I will probably be using something like this building style more often in the future. And not only did it, this only took me about three hours to build, so it could be done in about one evening. Uh, it's a major bump to our production. And it also looks good, which is kind of the whole point of this series. And there you have it, the end result of two evenings worth of building. Of course, it took me a little bit longer than that due to recording and things like that. Uh, but I'm really, really loving how this bite-sized run is turning out. I'm actually also really much in love with the blueprints, if you haven't noticed already. It just saves so much time because normally this would have taken me probably two or three times as much time in terms of setting all of this up while setting up screw production is not necessarily the most interesting thing about this game so definitely uh, update 7 is is paying off and making the game more enjoyable i also really like how our uh, first setup of the truck routes is, is turning out so i'm extremely excited about expanding that to the actual place that we're going to be building our secondary hub. And the secondary hub is going to look slightly different from the previous hub because we have access to a lot more stuff now. We also have some more advanced resources to make, so that's going to be fun to play around with. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know, will you be using something like this tower build as well in your own games? Maybe a variant of that? Or um, are you using blueprints in a completely different manner? I'm really interested to see how the community is, is taking up the blueprints now they're actually live. Um, let me know in the comments as well. Would you like to see a specific Fixmas uh, episode as well? Um, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to make one of those. But let me know in the comments if there's an interest for that. And I might consider that. And I really, really hope you enjoyed this. If you haven't done so, please ensure to like and subscribe. And I hope to catch you in the next one.